You asked for more swivel knife challenges, and that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. That's coming up. Hello everyone, my name's Daniel Reese. This is Weaver Leather Supply. Today, we're gonna be taking on another swivel knife challenge. Now, this is something that y'all said in the last one that we did that you really liked and that you wanted to see more of. So we're actually going to be working on this. Let me make sure the camera can see it. Yep, we're gonna be working on this lion in this project today. Now, before we really dive into it, I have a question for you. And that is, would you like to see the swivel knife challenges actually be something we do on a regular basis? Maybe once a month, I can't promise it'll be once a month, but is that something that you'd like to see on a regular or semi-regular basis? And if it is, what would you like to see us do? Like what kind of subject matter? So far we've done a swallow, we've done a wolf, and now we're gonna do a lion. What do you think would make a good subject matter, uh, you know, good content for a swivel knife challenge? So if you wanna see that, leave it in the comment section below, tell me yes or no, and then tell me what you think would be a good uh, suggestion for a subject for a swivel knife challenge. So anytime we start a new tooling project, we need to make sure that we take care of those prep steps first. In this particular project, that's gonna be casing the leather, stropping your blade, and tracing the project onto the leather. Now, if you need any more information or you need a, you know, a tutorial on any of those, we've done videos on all of them. And we'll put a link in the description below directly to those videos. That way, if you need more help on those, you can get straight to that and we can kind of go ahead and jump into the project. So anytime we're gonna be doing one of these swivel knife challenges, I don't wanna just you know cut in the project, shape it with a modeling spoon and send you off to do it on your own. I actually wanna focus on some different aspects of using the swivel knife. And for this swivel knife challenge, what we're gonna be taking a look at is fading in and fading out your cuts and when you should do that, as well as, as, well as the fact that not all of your cuts need to be the same depth. Some of them need to be really deep, really bold. And when I say really deep, I mean about a third the thickness of the leather. Other cuts are gonna be more accents and decorative cuts, and they need to be a lot more shallow. So while you watch me cut that in, let's talk a little bit about when to fade in, when to fade out, when to have a blunt end on either the beginning of the cut or the end of the cut. And really what it comes down to is, does the line that you're about to cut start from a dead end or end in a dead end, or does it fade in from nowhere or fade into nothing? Essentially what you're gonna be doing is copying or echoing that with your swivel knife. So when it comes to blunt or faded, we've got a lot of combinations here. The front end of it where we start can either be blunt or faded, and then you can get the same on the end of it as well, and then you can get combinations of those two. So there's a lot of variety in the type of cuts that you might run into. And those, the combination of cuts are mixed all the way through this pattern, which is one of the main reasons I picked it. So as you're cutting in, the, especially the mane of the lion, you're really going to have to ask yourself, what combination am I looking here? Does the beginning of it need a fade, faded or blunt end? And what about the same on the other end of the cut? So you're going to have to decide on each individual cut, are we looking for faded or blunt, beginning or end? and you're gonna have to decide one at a time which one looks best for that particular cut. So as you're cutting in the project, if you notice that your blade is starting to drag or stutter a little bit, that's typically going to tell you one of three things. The first one could be that you're working with a low quality leather. Now, if you're ordering from Weaver, you don't have to worry about that, but sometimes you can run into that in general in the industry. Low, low quality leather will cause your blade to feel like it's dragging or stuttering. The second thing could be maybe you just need more moisture in the leather, so you need to case it again. The third one would be that you need to strop your blade. You should be stropping your blade pretty much every time you pick it up.
So as we're cutting in the pattern for the lion, most of these around the mane are just gonna be long, flowing, straight cuts. But around the muzzle, we get into some areas here that are essentially folds in the skin or in the fur of the, the lion. Now, when we get into that, we wanna cut those in one at a time. So we're not making one big long line and then putting little tick marks in there to represent those. We're gonna cut each one of those in individually. And as we move to the inside of the muzzle, we're gonna fade those lines out so they disappear into nothing. So anytime that we're pulling a fade in a cut, meaning we're starting at a thicker end and we're fading into nothing, it's always gonna be easier to pull towards the fade. Uh, you should be able to do the opposite where you start with a fade and get deeper, but it's always gonna be easier to start deep and fade that cut as we pull towards ourselves. Now, if you look at the, uh, the chin of the lion right here, and we'll put a, uh, the pattern up on screen so you can get a really good look at it, but I'm gonna be pulling from the outside of the chin towards his nose. And that's because these lines, they fade the closer they get to the lion's mouth. So I wanna go deep to light. I want them to fade the closer that they get to the lion's mouth. So as we go through and we start to cut in the actual head of the lion, we want those cuts to be really deep and bold. That's going to give us the opportunity to create some depth and really make the head of the lion stand out in front of the mane. Now, if you're asking yourself, how, what does bold and deep mean? Well, about the deepest you typically want to go is about a third the thickness of the leather. That's generally a good rule. So now that we've got everything cut in with the swivel knife, we can go ahead and start adding in some depth and some shadows. Now that's something I typically would do with a, a variety of bevels going in there and really adding some shadows in. The swivel knife challenge is meant to be as simple and basic as possible. We don't wanna get it real complicated with a bunch of different tools and stamps. So for that, we're just gonna be sticking with our modeling spoons. These allow us to add some contours and some shadows to it, which is exactly what we want for getting some, some basic depth and shadows in into the project. Now, anytime I'm gonna be creating shadows and depth with a modeling spoon, I always wanna start from the darkest shadows and work to the lightest. And that's because it's always easier to add more than it is to take away. In this particular case, those shadows are gonna be the darkest right around his head. So that's what I'm gonna start with, adding those shadows in there. The further it gets away from his head, the more I want that shadow to fade into nothing. So how do we create that depth in there? I mean, it's easy to say, make this dark and have it fade out, but how do we actually do that? Well, it comes down to two things. Number one is gonna be the amount of pressure you're putting on the leather with the modeling spoon. And number two, how many times you go over that leather with the modeling spoon. Obviously, the more pressure you put on there, the more of a compression we're gonna get in that leather, which is gonna give us actual physical depth in the leather, and it will create some color as well but also going over it multiple times with that spoon, that's gonna create burnish. And burnish creates color. Color gives us the illusion of depth. So basically it comes down to how hard are you pressing with the modeling spoon and how many times do you go over the leather with it? I always encourage you to go slow and build it up over time instead of trying to get it all in there at once. So while I'm working in the shadows with the modeling spoon, let's talk a little bit about the logic behind where to put the shadows. So shadows are a direct result of a light source. And in this example, in this project, let's think of the, the lion as having a single light source directly above his head. Well, if we have that, what's gonna happen is all the shadows are gonna be on, on the underside of these locks of hair that we're creating here. So we wanna consistently keep those shadows 
on the downward side of those lines. And if we do that as we work our way around, what we're gonna create is a highlighted and shadowed look within the lion, which is gonna give us the depth that we're looking for. So one of the exceptions that we would have to that previous rule about the lighting is gonna be the outer border of the lion. Now, we wanna create some separation between the main and the background. Now, how do we do that? There's two ways we could do it. One is that I could just work my way around the lion and create kind of this haloed look around the whole thing, which is not gonna give us the look that we want. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work these one at a time, always making sure that I'm creating definition and a very subtle separation between the hair and the background. Really, if you just go in and you work these hairs one at a time, or these cuts one at a time, you're gonna end up with the look that you want. Just make sure that what we don't do is go around and create a halo around the lion. That's gonna work against you. You don't wanna do that. Just work them one at a time and you'll be fine. So I wanna point out one thing that's a little bit hard to see as I'm working through the project and that's what we call a double bevel. Anytime you're working on any kind of figure carving, and this swivel knife challenge is a figure carving challenge as well, it's just, doesn't have a lot of depth added into it. So a double bevel, this is a good example right here. If we look at the hair, we've already added that shadow that moves away from the head, right? Well, this head, the, the, the upper part of it right here, in fact, going all the way around it, that doesn't need to have a really sharp corner to it. We want that contoured back as well. So I'm gonna go in with my modeling spoon and gently round off the edges of the lion just to give it a little bit more shape. Now, the reason I pointed out, is, like I said, it can be a little hard to see in the video, in the project as I'm working through it, but we wanna make sure that we don't have a square headed lion. We want that to round off and gently slope back. It's very subtle, so don't overdo it. So now that we've got the majority of the hair and the shadows worked in, now we can go back in and start adding some depth to those shadows. Now, how do we do that? Well, the easiest way to do it is to refer back to our reference picture. And if we look at it, what you'll see is the top of the brow right here, or the top of the head, that's got some pretty deep shadows in there. It's a little darker through there. And then if we look below the muzzle, right around the chin, you'll see it goes from here around to the other side. That's a lot darker there as well. So we can go back in with pressure and uh, repeated strokes. We can add some more color in there, which is gonna give us those darker, deeper shadows. Before we wrap it up, we need to go back in and add some shadows down the nose and under the muzzle. If you look at the reference picture, there's some really light shadows through here that add a lot of contour to it. So essentially, we want to go back in, use our modeling spoon. This is going to be one of those situations where you want to use a repetition to add that, that color in there, not pressure necessarily. And that's going to add the color in here. Now, just below the muzzle, you're probably going to want a little bit of pressure there just to push that lip back to give us a little bit more definition. But those are some areas that we want to make sure that we don't overlook. And we need to add that contour in there. Other, otherwise, he's going to look really flat faced.
It's looking really good, but that shadow transition between the head and the outer parts of his mane, that needs to be a little softer. So we need to go in there, work that a little bit more, widen it out, and fade that shadow. So one of the last things I'm going to do is add in some hair detail. There's a lot of different ways we could do this, but I'm going to stick with the modeling spoons. One of the modeling spoons has a little bit of a point on the end of it, and I'm just going to use that to lightly scribe in some hair detail that flows with the mane. But notice I'm keeping the hair detail to the shadows. I don't want the hair to look stringy and like straw. So for this particular project, I'm just going to keep that hair detail into the shadows, mostly right up against his head. And last, I'm gonna go in with my fine tipped awl and add those spots in on his muzzle. So with most of the swivel knife projects, I add color to them at the end of it. Well, with this particular one, I really like the way that it came out just in the leather. So all I'm going to be doing is adding some Neat's Foot oil to it. The other reason I'm not adding any color is because I want to give you the opportunity to put your own personality and your own spin on this swivel knife challenge without any input from me. So if you decide to do that and you're comfortable with it, post it in the Chuck Dorsett fan page on Facebook and then tag me. I would love to see how your project came out. Well, that's going to do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, go make something amazing.